Uh, it's a bit surreal finding myself actually sitting here because it was only one year ago that I was sitting where you are watching as a fan of this show. Uh, I tuned in every week. I absorbed Andrew Doyle's polemic as he took these big, complicated concepts and ideas and somehow articulated them so that even I, whose reading material mostly has Wolverine or Batman in the title, <laughs> could grasp the very nub of a topic. I classified myself as part of the silent majority. I'd spoken up about anti-Semitism on the far left, but there were other trajectories and developments I could see taking hold in our society that were having a negative impact on freedom of speech, women's rights, children's safety, scientific truth, tolerance. And it all seemed quite complicated, especially as it was mostly propagated by friends and colleagues who I was and am politically aligned with. And it was all under the umbrella of kindness and equality. Hey, I'm a pretty good person, aren't I? Don't I like kindness and equality? Except I could see people being not very kind at all, especially to those who merely pointed out that some of the outcomes were, in fact, the very opposite of equality. As the silent majority, I watched J.K. Rowling bravely put her head above the parapet and politely ask for debate. As the silent majority, I watched as she received death threats and rape threats and attempts to destroy her reputation. As a silent majority, I watched other female authors and academics and activists hounded from their jobs. As the silent majority, I was scared. Scared of losing friends, work, scared of people thinking that I wasn't kind, that I didn't want equality. Scared of having to learn more, scared of not knowing enough. Fear choked my voice and it kept me silent. But those people who had found their voice, mostly women, kept going, kept fighting, kept arguing against those who continually refused to see their point of view and instead abused them for the crimes of daring to disagree with theirs. Then Maya Forstater won her tribunal and more people found their voice. As Millicent Fawcett wrote, courage calls to courage everywhere and its voice cannot be denied. And if I may be uh, so bold, as to do a bit of mansplaining on this famous feminist quote, perhaps everywhere also includes inside of us. The chain of bravery that flows from one person to the next, that we see in its purest form at the moment in Iran, is forged within. It's from within that when the voice first speaks, it then cannot be denied. Liking a tweet, sharing an article, buying a book, talking to friends in the pub, family on a camping trip, watching a TV show, sending a message last year to the host, who you kind of know, about something you think he might be interested in. Each action inspires another. The silent majority finds its voice. We're living in and fighting to maintain a free speech nation. So to those out there still trying to find your voice, I just want to say uh, it only takes the smallest of sounds to start building a chorus. And who knows, in a year, when Andrew next loses his voice, I hope you too will have found yours, and then maybe you could be sitting here. And I can get back to reading the X-Men. <laughs>